Hey there, Zach Crispin, TSS Garage. Here in the shop today, we have the John Bean B1200 Balancer. Let's take a look at some of its capabilities, weight and shape. Let's get after it. Today's wheel assemblies and the demand for high value tires no doubt present us with challenges when it comes to their effect on vehicle dynamics and perceived job well done, if you will. When a customer comes in for tires and leaves with a vibration that wasn't there before, it's pretty obvious from their point of view what the issue is. In reality, the effect on the vehicle is caused by more than just balance. One thing we often forget to check or question, is the assembly even round or round enough may be the better question. Mostly the second part of the equation is overlooked because truth is much easier said than done, right? So what are the odds stacked against us and how can we effectively catch it? And most importantly, what can we do to prevent it or improve the end result? First thing we need to do is properly mount this wheel assembly to the balancer. That means back cone or collet whenever possible and using proper tooling. So since this is a clad wheel, we're definitely gonna add a pin plate to the mix because we don't wanna be applying any pressure to the front of this simulated hubcap. Uh, we're also gonna use a collet so that we don't overextend too far into this bore and catch some of that plastic cladding that comes through. But just remember, if it's a lug-centric wheel, clad wheel, or we're just trying to uh, up our gains in terms of precision, adding a pin plate to the mix is always better because you're more closely emulating how that wheel goes on to the car. At the end of the day, if we're not duplicating how this wheel goes on the vehicle, we're not going to be balancing it on the same rotational axis as it is when it's on the vehicle. And that means everything that we do will be for nothing. So I'm going to grab our collet here, make sure it's a proper fit, load the wheel up. I'm going to use a speed plate. I already have the right studs on there and quickly just using my thumb, I can find the right lug pattern, lift up with my foot, power clamp engages, and we're ready to go. During the initial spin, the machine is going to measure the force of imbalance, look for spokes, measure the radial runout at the back of the bead seat areas, the roundness of the wheel, for example, the lateral runout at the rim flange, and the roundness of the tire. No doubt this takes a few more seconds than a quick weight only check spin, but the information gathered and therefore presenting the operator with potential problems vastly outweighs the time lost. If this is done properly, it could substantially reduce potential comebacks and prevent shakes from even leaving that aren't related to balance in the first place. So the B1200P is a fully automatic data acquisition machine. So what that means is there's no need for user input in terms of what am I working with here. I just simply close the hood, let the machine figure it out. But there is different levels or modes I can select from, and that's gonna change the trigger level at which the machine either acquires data, how much data, and what its round off limits are. So let's discuss what some of those are in terms of the, the home screen layout here. Down here in the bottom corner of the screen, we have a passenger car. We have a large SUV, which is also represented of a light truck and then we have a heavy duty truck. Where I like to classify these is pretty much everything is going to be under passenger car. Once I get into maybe D and E load range, maybe some Fs, so eight, 10, and some 12 ply tires, that's when I'm gonna step up into light truck. So if you think about that in terms of like maybe a Tahoe Suburban uh, platforms and then maybe heavy half tons, three quarter tons, one tons. Once I'm up here in this box truck, heavy duty truck, I'm really in that 17.5, 19.5, 22.5 heavy duty style tire range. So that's pretty rare that we're gonna be in that mode on a passenger car and light truck style balancer. What that does is that changes the round off amount from rounding to the nearest third or quarter ounce or so, half ounce here on light truck, and then two ounce range on the heavy duty truck. That also changes the trigger level on how round the assembly is, uh, which is adjustable in options, but by default from the factory, we're gonna be somewhere around 18 thousandths of an inch out of round. Up here, we're gonna be closer to 31 thousandths out of round, and then uh, 36 to 38 range on the heavy duty truck. In terms of balancer mode, basically what I'm doing is I'm limiting the gathering of information process. So manual is exactly what it sounds like. I'm gonna manually tell it what the size and shape is of whatever I'm working with. Balance with no spokes means it's only going to profile the wheel and measure it for weight. So that's gonna be our quickest cycle time. Balance only 
is going to add spoke detection to the mix. So the laser is going to come in there and it's going to look for spokes and try to figure out where those are. So if I want to do a behind the, the spoke mode application, it knows the data. And then balance with run out, which is where this machine is really specifically built for and where I would advocate that you keep it in because this is answering that second part of the question we discussed earlier. You know, just how round is it? So yeah, it's gonna take a few more seconds to measure all of the things, but the information that it gives us in the front end is, uh, is invaluable in terms of the sheer volume of tires and or wheels that we deal with usually that really aren't perfectly round. Once we make our selections, I'll keep it in passenger car and balance with run out, simply close the hood. Close the hood and the thing's gonna start its gathering process. As we can see, the laser scrolls across the wheel and what that is is called profiling, so it's measuring the size and shape and relative position of everything. Then it's gonna automatically look and count for spokes. Laser is gonna come in on the backside and it's gonna measure the overall roundness of the tire. Comes in on the side, measures lateral run out at the bead flange. And then on the top back of the bead seat area, it's measuring the roundness radial run out of the wheel itself. So now we're done with that initial spin. Every subsequent spin from here is only going to be a check in weight. So if I reclose the hood, we're going to have a short four to six second spin time and it's done because it's really just checking for weight. It's not measuring anything else. So that first initial spin, albeit a little bit lengthier than maybe a quick check of, a, of, of just weight condition, it's giving me information that I might not otherwise have gathered on a standard balancer. Representative here. So I have a wheel on here that maybe came into the garage, customers complaining of a vibration. Maybe we just did a balance and a rotate or a fresh set of tires and we have a situation where we have a customer that's coming back. This triangle is calling my attention to some unforeseen things here that is not just out of a weight condition. If I don't get this triangle, I can also access this information by pressing this icon here in the lower right corner. That's gonna give me a run out measurement information. But if I click here on this icon, it's going to come up to a summary screen. Radial run out on the first harmonic. So what this graph is displaying to me is how round is it as an assembly? How round is just the wheel or rim by itself? And is there any possibility of improving these two circles by match mounting? Now match mounting sometimes gets uh, confused with weight improvement, which uh, some, some of our other balancers, we call that weight optimization. Some other brands might call it something else. But really what you're doing with that is you're taking a tire, you're twisting it on a rim, and you're reweighing it, and the balancer's trying to strategically figure out where's the lightest part of these two circles going to marry up. So you have to do that a couple of times to feed it the information. But the B1200, knowing the roundness of each component separately, already has the data. It's telling me that my rim is too good and my tire is too bad. I can't improve it. The tire is to blame here. And in fact, this tire is to blame. It is 30 thousandths out of round intentionally. So maybe it had a flat spot from a lockup scenario or whatever, but that's never going to roll right. We could balance this tire all day long. It's still going to produce a up and down lift on the vehicle spindle, if you will, causing that same harmonic frequency that an out of balance tire exhibits. With this data, I can now go to maybe my customer, or um, I can go to my tire supplier and I can either exchange, replace the tire, or at least have a reason for what is at fault here and at fault scenario instead of just throwing time and effort at it. We have the data. A Couple of other scenarios you might see here on this screen is maybe we have a bad wheel and as an assembly, it's, it, it's never gonna get any better because the rim's bent. Well, this is going to in fact tell us that because we know exactly what that roundness is at that bead seat area. And then in the likely event that we have a little bit of misshape in the assembly and a little bit of misshape in the wheel, we can then go into a match mount scenario. And one time we can click on this button here. It's gonna say a tire changer is uh, uh, definitely needed to proceed. So I'm gonna click, I acknowledge that. When I acknowledge that, it's going to move forward and say, hey, index the tire with something. We're gonna use the valve stem for that. So what we're doing is we're giving a position to the wheel, to the balancer. So I'm gonna check that I've done that. And it's going to give me this ability to roll forward and mark the tire. 
So because this wheel's perfect and the tire's got all the fault in it, there's not any way we can really twist it to improve it. So that's why that distance wasn't very far. So if I move it and then chalk my tire, I would then dismount this assembly, proceed to break it down on a tire changer, bring the chalk mark to the valve stem, reseat the beads, bring the tire over to the balancer, and then we're just basically applying the correct amount of weight to correct the vibration issue at that point. Obviously in this scenario, we're not able to, uh, to make any improvement because the tire has all of the problem. Pretty simple to do, one step, we didn't have to remount, break down tire, remount, break down tire, and so forth and we're getting all the benefit of, of match mounting, just like an OE does with a brand new set of wheels and tires. Typically, when you match mount a tire, you decrease the amount of weight necessary to balance that assembly, and that's because we're making that assembly more round. That's why a brand new car, if you look at the first set of wheels and tires on those vehicles, they often don't have very much weight on them. That's because they're match mounted from, from the manufacturing process, the way they do it. We don't typically do that in the aftermarket scenario so much because, well, time is money, right? But if you had this information at your fingertips in that short, you know, extra 10 seconds we spend for that, um, for that data acquisition, don't you think you could put out a better product with less likelihood of having uh, secondary vibration related comebacks or, or concerns. So we go back to the to the main screen. Everything's pretty simple. Behind the spoke, if I have this icon up here with a check mark on it, that's telling me that uh, I got a good spoke capture and it understands where they're at. So if I want to enter behind the spoke mode, I can click there and now I have two inside planes. Well, if I touch one of the weights on the inside planes, it's going to automatically advance to that and then I can simply highlight that plane and boom, there's my weight right behind the spoke. So, you know, nice 20, 22 inch wheel with maybe five or six spokes, a lot of real estate down there. We wanna put out a good product that looks nice too. Um, that's a fantastic way to do it, right? We don't have four ounce of stick on weight just right there in the middle for, for everyone to see. We also have this laser movement ability for that inside plane. So if I touch this and I go ahead and roll this back and forth, it's going to scroll the laser in and out, which is changing the location um, that the balancer chose to apply that weight. It's gonna change its lateral position. That gives me the ability to customize where I want the weight to go, not where the balancer thought it should go and sometimes that's a nice override feature to have because I can take this wheel that may be extra wide there on that drop center piece there of the wheel and apply the weight closer to the outboard side or maybe there's some imperfection right there along the wheel and I want to pull it back a little bit. All, all the math is recalculated automatically, no need to, to do anything, so that's pretty cool. Everything in terms of changing my ALU selections are right there, touch screen, so when I touch that clip on weight mode, Again, automatically recalculates no need for a check spin or additional data to be applied. And because it profiled the wheel, it's telling me use your yellow MC weights because that's the shape that's gonna fit best on this profile. So it's gonna monitor and track that. I also have the ability to track this data to a ride performance report. So if I click down here and I tell this that this is the left front or the right rear, I can assign this particular spin since I clamped and before I unclamp this data to that particular report. When I go to the printer over here, I can print just this wheel's data, I can screenshot, or I can print all the reports when I finish a set of four or six or whatever I'm doing and send that not to a physical printer, but write it to a USB stick located that I'd put on a thumb drive right in the back of the, of the machine here. And so when I take that USB drive and I go take it to a, a PC, it'll be in a folder labeled reports and it will have all of this data by date and time on it. If I had to have some information to back up my claim here in terms of you need a new tire, it's there. That being said, we would normally just apply our weight if we don't have anything that sets off the triggers on this particular wheel assembly, um, such as an out of shape condition, what have you, then this triangle wouldn't be there. I could just simply apply my weight like normal, ship the product and keep going. A fascinating 
statistic, one in four tires is unacceptably out of round according to the manufacturer's tolerances at the at, from an uh, OE level. So from an aftermarket perspective, one in four tires going on a vehicle is going to give you an out of shape condition. That's a pretty high percentage. Wouldn't you like to know before it leaves your garage, hey, this tire is going to exhibit some problem. That also gives me the ability to strategize, where am I gonna put it? Probably right rear, furthest away from the driver or something like that, but I also have the ability to up my customer service a little bit, and armed with that information, I might be able to um, give some, some form of consideration to the customer as to why the vehicle may be vibrating and things like that. In a world of high value tires and tire technology, uh, you know, the logistics involved in just bringing the level of tires we need here in North America alone to us is pretty amazing and the fact that you can buy a fairly decent tire for a hundred bucks or what have you is, is is pretty amazing to me but the sheer number of those molded carcasses of tires themselves you know uh, being susceptible to not being so round having this ability to have this information so fast can really really help you out so some of the other features to include uh, notably on this machine is we can order it in 115 or 230 volt configurations. Power clamp assembly as discussed earlier. Power clamp is a game changer in terms of accuracy and coupling because we're applying 90 pound feet of torque to that wheel assembly every time. So consistency is key. Touch screen, very easy to follow user interface. Push to advance to the next weight planes. The ability to go between dynamic modes and single mode. And then pushing the magnifying glass here is gonna give me my actual weight value, not my rounded off amount. So I can come in here and do a real precise work if I'm trying, I have the ability to do that. Home screen, there's a stop button here on any air codes that might pop up due to a, a misclamp or we didn't close the hood properly or something like that. So very easy to clear those. The ability to press and hold in position with a positive lock. That's a feature that the power clamp also inherently gives us. So I have a very positive engagement holding that wheel so that I can apply weight without it just kind of uh, rolling or teetering back and forth on us. So that sums it up for the B1200 Balancer. Thanks for checking us out. Check out some of our other videos online, TSS Garage. Catch you on the next one.